four. Hmm. How'd you get four? Tell me how you did that, JJ. All right. Tell so me your thought process. I knew that 20 minutes equals four, so you can make four fifths of a necklace. So All right. So you know four fifths of a necklace took her 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So if I put N here and time here, 20 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Since I know an hour equals. So I turned off like 60. 60? Okay, an hour equals 60 minutes. So why did you why did you need to know that an hour equals 60 minutes? Why couldn't I just put one right there? Because you need to know how much they have multiplied the four by. Because they need to be in the same unit to be able to find the multiplier. Okay, so what's our multiplier? Uh Four? 20 times four is? Ma'am? Yeah? Never mind, I messed up. That's okay. Yeah? No, no, no. How do we times get? Times three. Times three. You were close. Okay. So if I multiply that three times, so she has three times as much time so what do we expect her to do for necklaces? Make three. We expect her to make three times as many necklaces. Okay, so we're going to take three over one times four fifths. That's going to give us 12 fifths. They obviously want it in a decimal because they want it rounded to the nearest tenth. So now we're going to take 12 divided by five. Will five go into one? Mm -hmm. Will five go into 12? Two times. Two times. I have two left over, so I'm gonna put a decimal, bring it up into my quotient, add a zero, bring it down. Five goes into 20. Four times. Four times. So my answer is 2.4, because four times five is 20, and I don't have a remainder. All right, so it's going to take, she's going to make 2.4 necklaces. All right, did anybody think of it a different way? Um, I just multiply, no, no, no. Go ahead, tell me what you're thinking, Martel. I did exactly. You did, did that? I didn't do all of that. I just did the um, four over five times three. Okay, okay. But you knew that to get from 20 minutes to 60 minutes, you multiplied it by three. Is that where you got the three from? Okay. Did anybody find the unit rate? How much she makes in one minute, and then could you have multiplied it by 60? If I figured out how much she found in one, how much she made in one minute, could I then multiply that by 60 to find out how much she made in 60 minutes? Yes. A little bit harder, but that's, we could do it. This is the easiest way. All right, what clarifying questions do you have for me? None? All right. So we are covering lesson 11. Our learning goal was let's divide signed numbers. So you did some division last night. Our goals by the end of class, you should know the rules for dividing integers and you should be able to divide integers in different situations. Okay, if you didn't copy down the notes from the slides, this is the general idea. If the signs are the same, the answer is going to be positive. So a negative divided by a negative is a positive. A positive divided by a positive is a positive. Is that the same rule we had for multiplication? Yes. Okay. 
If the signs are different, the answer will be negative. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. A negative divided by a positive is also a negative. Okay? And then there's one last thing I want to talk about. If I have negative one-fourth, this is saying the opposite of one-fourth. If I turn it into a decimal, this would be the opposite of 25 hundredths. Do we agree? Okay. I can also write this as negative 1 over 4. What is a negative divided by a positive? Because remember, this sign means divide. Negative. A negative and then 1 divided by 4. So do these two equal each other? Yes. Okay. I can also write it as 1 over negative 4. What is a positive divided by a negative? A negative. 1 divided by 4. Do I get the same thing? Yes. Okay. Now, can I write it that way? What is a negative divided by a negative? Positive. So this would be positive 2,500. Does that equal that? No. No. So if you see the negative sign, it can either be on the outside, it can go to the numerator, or it can go to the denominator. It will not go to both the numerator and the denominator. All right? Make sense? That's going to be important when we divide fractions because we multiply by the reciprocal. So you're going to need to know where does that negative sign go. All right? Anybody need time to write that down? Or, go ahead and write it down. This right here. So this is wrong. But these are all the same. Equals this equals that. And if you look right up in front of you, it's up on the wall. Need more time, Eli? Okay. Anybody at home need more time? All right. So let's start with the practice problem. Got paper and pencil. You're going to write it down. Everything I write down, you write down, and then you'll screenshot it. Anybody need paper or pencil? I have a question. Paper? See the black box behind you? There's a whole bunch of scrap paper in there. What's your question? Could you please check the chat? Don't paper. That's fine with me, but you really ought to stay for the discussion. Thank you. And we're gonna play Bye. and we're gonna play a game. You'll miss the game. Alright, fine. I'm okay with that. Find the quotient, 24 divided by negative 6. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide is it positive or negative. So this is a positive divided by a negative. Is my answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. negative. Okay. Okay, now what is 24 divided by 6? 4. So my answer is? Negative 4. All right. Negative 15 divided by 3 tenths. Is my answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative because a negative divided by a positive is a negative. What is 15 divided by 3 tenths? Well, can we divide by 3 tenths? No. Nope. We're going to move this over. We're going to move this over because we're multiplying by 10. So 3 goes into 15 five times. 
bring down the zero, three goes into zero, zero times, so my answer is negative 50. All right. Anybody got questions on what I did there? Did I lose anybody? All right, negative four divided by negative 20. Is my answer gonna be positive or negative? Positive, because that's a negative divided by a negative. So my answer is gonna be positive. I'm gonna write it like this. Can I reduce that? Is that a correct answer for this? Yes. Could I also have done this? Yes. Okay. Will 20 go into 4? So I'm going to put a 0, decimal, add a 0. Will 20 go into 40? How many times? 2. And that gives me 40. I subtract and I get 0. Is 1 fifth the same as 2 tenths? Yes. Yes. So you could either write your answer as a fraction or as a decimal. Did I lose anybody along there and you needed question answered? All right. Who needs more time? Okay. On to question two. We're finding the quotients, but look at all those fractions. How do we divide fractions? Anybody remember? Keep change flip. Oh, keep change flip. there is no such thing as keep change flip in math. It is called multiplying by the reciprocal or using the multiplicative inverse. The trick you learned was keep change flip. That helps you remember what to do. Okay. All right. So we're going to keep. We'll go ahead and we'll talk about it. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So 2 fifths times, what's the reciprocal of 3 fourths? 4 thirds. 4 thirds. Okay. Well, look, we get to follow the rules of multiplication from yesterday, right? What is a positive times a positive going to be? Positive. A positive. Okay. We're going to multiply straight across. 2 times 4 is 8. 5 times 3 is 15, and you told me it was positive. So did I lose anybody in any of those steps? All right, let's look at number two. Do you want, as a fraction, do you want us to have it as a fraction? Or do you want us to no, I leave it as a fraction. Generally, if they give you something in a fraction, you're going to leave it as a fraction. Okay. okay, so we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So 9 fourths multiplied by 4 over negative 3. Okay. Is our answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative, because this is a positive times a negative. So our answer is going to be negative something. Okay. We can multiply straight across. But could we, could we um, cancel numerator to denominator? Will these fours, will four go into both of them? Four goes into that once, four goes into that once. What goes into both of those? Three. Three. So this is going to be negative one, and this is going to be three. So we end up getting negative 3 over 1, which is negative 3. All right, if you don't like canceling, and it's okay if you don't, you can multiply straight across. 9 times 4 is 36. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 36 divided by negative 12 is negative 3. Did I end up in the same place? 
Yes. All right. Did I lose anybody in all of that? All right, who needs more time? Okay, this one, we have negative 5 sevenths multiplied by the reciprocal. So that's gonna be negative three over one. Okay, is my answer gonna be positive or negative? Mm-hmm, because I have a negative times a negative. So five times three is 15, seven times one is seven. We can leave our answer just like that. If you want, you can change it into a mixed number. So that would be two and one seven. Okay, questions? All right, last one. Negative 5 thirds divided by 1 6. We are going to multiply by the reciprocal. Is my answer going to be positive or negative? Uh, negative. 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 Good. We're remembering those rules. 5 times 6 is 30 over 3. 30 divided by 3 is. 10, so our answer is negative 10. Any of those steps confuse you? No? All right. Anybody need more time? All right. Good, Ashley? You look like you're confused. Where did I lose you? On this last one? No, it was actually on the number three. Okay, this one? Yeah. Negative five sevenths times negative three over one, because that's the reciprocal of negative one third. It would, I thought it was like negative one, wasn't it? Okay, does it matter where I put the negative no. sign? I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't? Mm -mm. Okay. It, it just matter. has to be in one place. I could have put it down here. I just kind of put it on the outside because now I'm thinking a negative times a negative. Okay, I got it now. Okay, good question. Excellent. That's the kind of thing I want you to ask me. All right, can I erase? All right. All right, all you're gonna do is tell me whether the, the variable is going to be a positive or a negative. So this is saying two times X equals six. Is X gonna be positive or negative? Positive. Why? Because two times two equals six. Okay, because a positive times a positive equals a? positive so that has to be a positive all right number two negative two times x equals 6.1 negative why is it going to be negative because i have a negative sign because a negative times a positive. what do i want to get i want to get the positive nishan so i need a negative right there to get to a positive so that one's going to be negative Okay, number three. I have a positive and I end up at a negative. It's going to be a negative. Everybody agree? Okay, because a positive times a negative equals a negative. Equals a negative. So that X is going to have to be negative something. Okay, the last one. I have a negative. I want to end up at a negative. So what does my variable have to be? Okay. You said positive, why? Because positive with, positive with a negative equals a negative. Right, why did you say negative? Because I already see a negative sign. But then I got it here because, uh, because, it's, because it is six point. I don't care about the numbers, I'm just looking at the sign. If this is a negative 
Am I going to multiply it by a negative to get to a negative? Oh, it's going to be positive. It's going to be a positive. Okay. Good job, Michelle. Questions you have for me about that? For change, we didn't have to worry about the numbers. We just worried about the sign. Okay. Can I erase? All right, problem four. Try that again. There we go. We're going to solve these mentally. All right. Three times negative four equals A. What's A going to be? Oh. Let's go around the room. Let's start with... I can't remember your name. Kayla? Kayla? No. Carla? Carla. Okay, I knew it started with a K. All right. What's it going to be? What's A going to equal, Carla? Equal Three times negative four. Use those resources. Look up there. Negative 12. Why is it negative? Because it's a positive and a negative. Uh-huh. When we multiply a positive and negative, we get a negative. All right. Ashley, B times negative 3 equals negative 12. Okay, is B going to be positive or negative? Positive. Okay. Now, what times 3 equals 12? 4 times 3. Four times three. Let's check it. 4 times negative 3, does that equal negative 12? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Negative 12 times something equals 12. Negative 12 times something equals 12. Is C going to be a positive or a negative? A negative. A negative, because a negative times a negative is a positive. Now, 12 times what equals 12? Mm. 12 times 1, right? So is this true? Negative 12 times negative 1, does that equal positive 12? Yes. Okay. Nishan, D times 24 equals negative 12. Okay. First off, is D going to be positive or negative? Negative. Okay. What times 24 equals 12? Is it 0.5? It is, or one half. Half of 24 is 12. 12. Okay? And you were exactly right with the negative sign. All right, good job. Thanks for the help out there. I was the one who answered the number three and number four. Thank you. All right. Anybody get lost in the middle of that? We need to direct you on the right path. No, ma'am. Okay. All right, who needs more time? Sean's still writing. You good, Nisha? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, in order to make a specific shade of green paint, a painter mixes one and a half quarts of blue, two cups of green, half a gallon of white. How much of each color is needed to make 100 cups of this green paint? Oh my goodness. We put in a half a cup of white and get the negative shade of green. Well, we want it to be that same recipe. So, so give me a strategy. What do you think we're going to do? Are we going to make a tape diagram, a table, a double tape. number line? 
A tape? A table, okay. We're looking at like a recipe, aren't we? Yeah. And yesterday with the hair color, we used a table. So we're gonna do the same thing today. So we've got green, we've got blue, we've got white, and we need to know the total. Okay, in green paint, we have one and a half quarts. In blue paint, we have two cups. In white paint, we have half a gallon. Okay, yesterday when we did the problem, we just added them all up to figure out how much hair dye we had, right? Can I just add these numbers? One and a half plus two plus no. half? Why not, JJ? I don't know. I was I'm confused. Okay. What, does anybody else have an opinion? It's okay. I just want your opinion. Am I just going to add them up? Because I want to make how much? Technically, no. Because I want to make a hundred cups. Technically, no, because you want to have a stand up to I'm not going to have enough to make 100 cups, so I'm going to have to figure out what my multiplier is to get me to 100. Do I add just these numbers to figure out how much I have now? Can I just add those numbers to figure out how much paint yeah. I have? Yeah. No. Yes. So I can add one and a half plus half makes two plus two makes four. So do I have four? Yes. That's all you have right now. I have four what? Huh. Well, no. I have one and a half quarts. No. I have two cups, and I have half a yeah. gallon. So what? What can? Is there a problem with that? Let's start there. Yeah. They're not all the same. Units. They're not all the same units, so I can't add them together yet, can I? So I need to change them all to the same unit. Now, I want my answer to be in cups. So what do you think I'm going to change all my units to? Cups. Okay, hey, this is already cups, so I'm just going to leave that cups. So I need to know how many cups one quart equals how many cups? Four. four. Okay. So if one quart equals four cups, one and a half quarts is going to be? Two cups. Six. six cups all together. Did you follow that logic? Four cups for the quart, and then half of that would be two. So four plus two is six. All right. Does anybody know one gallon equals how many 16. cups? Sixteen. So it'll be eight cups. So this is going to be eight cups. Now can I add them all up? Yes. Okay, eight and two is 10 plus six is 16 cups. Now I need to know, what am I gonna multiply 16 by to get to 100? Ooh, so take 100 divided by 16. What does that equal? <coughs> Okay, let's check it and make sure. Take 16 and multiply it by 6.25. Does that give us 100? Okay, so our multiplier is 6.25. We want six and 25 hundredths times more of each color to make it the same shade. So we're gonna multiply each one of these by 6.25. So take out your calculators, multiply six times 6.25. And that's gonna be cups, okay? 12.5. 12.5? Okay. 50? Yes. Okay. Is 
Is that gonna give me a hundred? Yep. All right, it's just like yesterday's problem, but we added a little snafu in there with the different units. Whenever you're staring at different units, you're gonna to need to put them in the same unit, okay? Did I lose anybody in that? All right, who needs more time? You said that we're gonna be playing a game later. Yeah. We're going to play a game. We're almost done. We got one more question and then we're going to play a game. All right. Nobody needs more time? Okay. All right. Last problem. Here is a list of the highest and lowest elevations on each continent. Which continent has the largest difference in elevation and the smallest difference? What does difference mean to do? What does difference mean to do? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Subtract. Subtract. So I'm going to take 4,810, subtract negative 28. Well, we know subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite, right? The additive inverse. So we're going to copy, change it to addition, Take the opposite of negative 28. What's the opposite of negative 28? 28. And we get 4,838. Okay. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I should have looked. Okay. Um, you're going to do the first one. Carla, you're going to do the first one as well. Second, third, fourth, fifth, and the last one. Mm -hmm. You'll do the next to the last one. Okay? All of these are getting subtracted. So turn it into an addition problem and then use your calculator. You're at first and first. So you two are doing Asia. You're doing Africa, you're doing Australia, you're doing North America, you're doing South America, and you're doing Antarctica. Those of you at home, pick one to do. Okay, we're subtracting them. So your first step is to turn it into an addition problem. Copy, change, opposite. And then you can use your calculator, but you shouldn't have to. You can probably add them up. Copy, change, opposite is your first step to get for Antarctica, I mean South America. 7,865. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Let's see what you get for Asia. Carla, you got Asia done? What'd you get? Eli, what'd you get for... Um, I got that. <laughs> okay. Nishan, what'd you get for Africa? Good. Okay. I got four. I got four thousand. Wait, no, I got four. I got four thousand eight hundred ninety-nine. Awesome. How about North America, Ashley? I got six thousand. Um, eight hundred and eighty-four. Awesome. Antarctica. Four thousand. And Asia. What does this change to? 8,848. Change it to addition. What's the opposite of negative 427? 
positive 427. So you're going to add 8848 and 427. So 8 and 7 is 15. So that is 9,275. All right, which continent has the largest difference? Asia. Asia. Okay. Which one has the smallest difference? Europe. Europe. All right. That's the last problem. All right, so take a picture of your work and you will submit it on the Google slide for the practice problems for the week. I'll give you a minute to write all that down. Then I'll show you the next steps and then I'll show you where we're going after that. Okay, who needs more time? Oh, you're still writing, Sean, that's fine. I will wait. Okay. All right, your next steps. So you've got two Khan Academies. They, you will click next when you get to assignments. It's on the next page. Dividing negative numbers, dividing positive and negative fractions. You have a check-in to do and a reflection. You need to submit your practice problems. So we've been doing those every day. Just put them on the slide and submit. Your independent practice, you should have been doing that every day. Take your screenshot, put it on there, and before Monday, you need to do the Lesson 13 slide, okay? Now I want you to go to gimkit.com backslash live, okay? We're not going to play the same game, we're going to play a different game. It's an easier game. Okay, everybody go there, gimkit.com backslash live. All right, what's the rule for subtracting numbers? What do you do when you subtract? The first thing you do is copy, change, opposite. And then you follow the rules for addition. So you do copy, change, opposite, then you follow these rules. Are the signs the same or different? If they are the same, you add them. If they're different, you subtract them, and then you decide are there more negatives or more positives. All right? We are going to play for 10 minutes. I'm going to start you out with $20. The game code is 67. Two seven two six seven two seven two. So go to gimkit.com backslash slide six seven two seven two. All 
And we're going to see who gets the most points. Okay? Anybody need more time to get in? Anthony, are you going to play? Anthony's not even there. Do we have to play? I would like you to play to get some practice on subtracting, please. Okay. Do you know who um, entered f into the game first? I have no idea. I don't pay attention to that. It was just a lot of people at once. Okay. Just JJ, are you good? Okay. All right. Here we go. Copy, change, opposite. No calculators. You need paper and pencil. Copy, change, opposite.
Calculator. That was good practice. I don't, I don't even have a calculator. Okay, good practice. If you liked it, you could have um, done some clapping. All right, so back to what you need to be working on when you come back after exploratories. You need to work on these things here when we come back. Okay? All right, those of you. Are, yes. You can all pass I don't up. even use a calculator. Well, way to go. Good job. Maybe if I started with all the Khan Academies, I would do it all correctly. 